Friday is 100 days of load shedding. Which stocks sectors benefit the most? Powell suggests maybe November will be the first and only rate cut this year. Tesla no longer dominates. That's fine. SARS changes to tax-free rules. RSA retail savings bonds rates down, down a lot. This is JC Direct episode 594 for 4 July. My name is Simon Brown, and this podcast is brought to you by just one lap.com. So let's kick off with uh, load shedding. Uh, we haven't had any, as I record this on Wednesday afternoon, 98 days. Friday will be 100 days of no load shedding. Remember, we thought it was elections. Yeah, of course, that's why we're not getting load shedding. Uh, then we thought maybe it was they burning the heck out of diesel. Well, it's not diesel. It's not elections either, we now know. Uh, they they brought uh, some, some new... Uh, Capacity online, what was it? Uh, Casilla Unit 5 has been brought out of test phase. That was over the weekend. That is 800 megawatts that comes in. We've got another unit, 800 megawatts at Madupi and 1,000 megawatts from Kuburg, which should both come in this year. Now, let's be clear. ESCOM is saying, look, we expect some winter load shedding, uh, maybe up to stage two. None of that four or six or remember the phobia around stage eight. Uh, it was real phobia. Don't get me wrong. We weren't, uh, we weren't being silly when we were worried about it. But it just it, it so far hasn't happened. So we're going to get some stages one and two probably over winter, you know, maybe even three or something. But so far, so good. And ESCOM's cap- capacity to, to burn diesel. And, and you know, I always say, you know, folks are like, oh, it costs a lot. Sure. But the impact of load shedding, uh, what does it say? Saab, South African Reserve Bank said cost us 1.8% to GDP last year. We only did 09 Could have tripled our GDP. They say it adds half a percent to inflation. I mean, these are chunky, chunky numbers. So my answer is burn the diesel if we need to. Absolutely burn the diesel. No concerns around that. But is, is load shedding behind us? We, the worst is behind us, I suspect. We may still get bits and pieces. Of course, the other biggie is that South Africans, businesses and uh, consumers have been putting on rooftop solar and everything else like there is absolutely no tomorrow. I'm here in Rosebank. When I go to the top of the building, I can look down on the Rosebank Mall, and that roof is just solar. 100% solar. Now, where I live, I'm in a flat. I can't do any solar. Um, but we certainly have seen, you know, I, I'm thinking of my friends. I mean, three, four, five, I can count eight folks that I know who put solar last year. Now, are they feeling stupid? Oh, no. Have you seen what ESCOM costs you? you know, th- so that takes need off the grid. And, of course, our lack of GDP growth, absolutely, as well. And also the mines. We've seen some PGM miners shutting down, uh, closing shafts. That is a huge user of power as well. Now, the mines are building capacity left, right, and center. But, you know, you shut a couple of shafts, that changes things. So I think we can say, confidently, the worst is absolutely behind us. I don't think it's gone. It will probably be with us for many years still to come. But who's the big winners? Well, the easy one is ShopRite, right? I hold ShopRite. They told us they were spending a billion rand last year on diesel. A billion rand. They only made 8 billion profit. So that's 12.5% of their profit uh, went on diesel. They could have made 9 instead of 8. So giant numbers there. Now, I said before, if you're not using diesel, you're then using electricity. And that costs you money. Make no mistake about that. But electricity is, even at the expense of ESCOM rates, vastly cheaper than using diesel. So maybe they save half a billion rand, uh, and that adds you know, 6% to, 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 to earnings for them. Uh, pick and pay, same story. Shop, sorry, spa, same story, to a lesser degree for spa. But still, broadly the same story. So the, 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 the food retailers, absolutely. Manufacturers, yes, but we don't have much in the manufacturing space, although it's the down uh, suppliers. So think of the, the likes of Invicta and Hudeco. For them, uh, load shedding is not a big issue, but it's a big issue for their customers. So no load shedding, they suddenly get an uplift because their customers don't have those sort of challenges that we've been seeing. So certainly some winners there. Uh, others, I mean, for example, there's a drainnet who've got the, they, they are selling in batteries and, and commercial solar. Those sales will continue. 
maybe some companies are going to push it back or pull back a bit on the spend because they're looking around and saying, hmm, not so bad. But that would be, I think that would be short-sighted. And you know, maybe they're going to do it over three years instead of one year or two years or something like that. And I take their point, CapEx, you know, let's, let's pull back where we potentially can. But it's also renewable and it's also cheaper. Those are two of the big drivers to get off. Real estate investment trusts, particularly shopping centers. I mentioned the mall next to me here in Rosebank, but that's not enough. They still run generators. When the power goes, that generator goes, and it is a monster of a generator. So they're doing better in that regard. They're absolutely sitting in a better position and thinking to themselves, hey, this is quite sweet. Suddenly, we don't have to run diesel. Savings there as well. Not as big, perhaps, as the ShopRite sort of savings, but absolutely savings just nonetheless. So we'll also probably see uh, you know, a number of stores doing better within the malls, but most of them had some sort of backup. Uh, we're thinking the more rural malls and the like, you know, maybe a Mr. Price or something was having to run on some generator. Again, moderately small. And gone are the days. I remember early days of, of the load shedding. Not early, early as in 2008. Terrifying thought. 16 years of load shedding as we sit here right now. Anyway, uh, but sort of two years ago or so, my local uh, clicks, when power went, they shut the doors. That's no longer the case. Yeah, so there will be a bit of an uplift from that. I wonder about, there was a lot of talk that folks were going out to spur when load shedding was happening. It will take some shine off that. I'm not so sure that the consumer that under pressure was like load shedding, which let's be clear, I mean, it was happening, what, uh, once, twice a day, uh, 10, 12 times a week. We were all rushing to spur that frequently. And again, it was a cost to a place like Spur. So I, I think the big win is, is the likes of ShopRite. I think the, the REITs with shopping centers and offices are going to uh, certainly do better as well, uh, not as big as potentially ShopRite in that regard. But uh, Invicta, Hideko, those sort of companies. But more broadly, it's just good for the economy. You know, it, it just takes stress and pain out of the economy, which is, you know, we have a fragile economy as it is already. Uh, load shedding was, was, was part of the problem, but absolutely not helping. We remove that problem, we've still got challenges with Transnet. Think the ports, uh, think the railway lines. They, they're improving a little bit, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not gone up by any stretch of imagination. So a, a, a good news story, 100 days on Friday of no load shedding. We will take it every day single time. So we've got some uh, events coming up. We've got two at the moment. We're doing pretty much two a, a month at this point in time. We've got our two for July. Now, the Unlock the Power of Income Investing with One Invest ETFs had to be delayed for reasons. It's now happening on Tuesday at 11, and then the following Thursday at 5.30. We've got a Standard Bank Power Hour, Defensive Local and Offshore Income Portfolio. The operative words there are defensive, local and offshore, and income. We're going to look all over the place. We'll look at individual stocks. We'll look at ETFs. We'll look at bonds. We'll look at the whole shindig, uh, but defensive. I've built these portfolios before, uh, and the one had coronation and pick and pay in it. Ouch and ouch. Now, coronation got their, their, their respite from, the, from SARS, so dividends are back, but pick and pay, it might be a while. Just one lap.com slash events, more information and booking. Remember, power hour in person. Join us in Rosebank. We're getting good audiences. We had over 100 last time, which is lacquer to see. That music seems very loud. Hopefully it's just my earphones and not you where it is absolutely booming in. Uh, anyway, let's pick up on Jerome Powell, who said he thinks the he kind of hinted at a, at a speech he gave on Tuesday that first rate cut might only be November. Remember back at sort of late last year, the talk was we were going to get six. Hasn't bothered markets. They've continued running higher, but down to one. That meeting is 21 November. We've got two more before then, 18 July and 19 September. I've been saying for a long time he can't do September 
too close to an election. I think that will absolutely spook people. Uh, but we will see. At, at this point, uh, it, it looks like I, – I think if I were a betting person, I would bet for one from the FOMC, and I think we can sneak two for our own uh, MPC. Let me quickly pull up those dates. MPC – 18 July, 19 September, 21 November. I would be betting on 19 September and 21 November. We'll get one at each of those. My bad, I was reading that wrong. It is, that's MPC I was giving you. Uh, Jerome Powell's got 6, 7 November, then he's got 17, 18 December. Uh, there is a chance he could do us in November and a December and give us two. But it does look like, it looks like the July one is off the table. The September one, I've always been of the view off the table. So now we're down to November and December. Those are pretty much as soon as I think we can hope to get them. Just an interesting observation that I've got. We've got uh, uh, Mr. Price today. And by today, I'm talking Wednesday afternoon. Mr. Price is ex-dividend today. Normally, when a stock goes ex-dividend, you would expect it to fall more or less by that dividend amount. Uh, you know, absolutely expected. Uh, the dividend was five rand twenty six point eight cents. That's quite exact, and the stock is up a buck. So technically, we are up six rand twenty six today, uh, which means it completely, absolutely covered the dividend. You don't often see this. I, I don't know when last I've seen it. So if it's up six bucks today, that's some three percent. But I think that's just broadly in line. True is, is up 2.4%. Uh, the Fashini Group, which I hold along with Mr. Price, is up 3.1%. It's just broadly up with the sector. And, and what are we seeing? We, we're seeing a market that is responding to our uh, cabinet announced by the president on Sunday evening, uh, a cabinet of, they're calling it a government of national unity, uh, GNU, a coalition, call it what you will. First time since the Mandela 1994 cabinet that we have multiple parties in the cabinet, dominated by the ANC, of course, then the DA, then the IFP, and then a whole bunch, uh, Freedom Front Plus, uh, good, and PSC got some, uh, Patriotic Alliance got one, Gaten McKenzie, who's suddenly taking it very seriously being a sports minister. He's promised to start running. Um, anyway, so the market is responding to that, but a lot of folks are like, but not much response. Well, no, not much response because, quite frankly, what we're seeing is it was expected. Yes, last week was noisy as heck, but that's what markets do best. But the RAND is the weird one. So the RAND was 1860 Wednesday morning when I was doing my money web show. It's improved to uh, 1843. Uh, sorry, I want that chart there. And as always, that and give me weekly. There is our RAND. Uh, it's a couple of years view. We can see that that sort of 18-ish level there, a little below, it's been popping below, is important. What we have got perhaps that is interesting is we are getting lower highs and lower lows, which is bullish for the RAND, right? Lower is better for the RAND. So we're certainly seeing that playing through. But what we haven't had is a decisive break. What we also haven't had is a move above 19 since... Uh, when is that? April of this year. Mm, okay, that's actually not very long ago. It's what, uh, call it 10 weeks ago. But hey, we will take it. We haven't seen that decisive break, though. The decisive break is going through 18 with aggression, heading down to those lows back here, that low from 1740 of June of last year, and then ultimately getting back to these levels back here, which is around the 17 or even sub-17 levels we saw in Jan 2023. That is absolutely possible. Uh, what we, the, the key thing is it's going to be slow. This I, I've done a couple of podcasts talking broadly around the, the, the GNU and expectations, and it's playing out as I expected, I suppose one could say, but it's going to be a long grind. It's not going to happen overnight. It is going to be something that is going to be slow. It's going to play out over five years. We've had some anecdotal evidence that foreigners have been coming back into our market, but small amounts, you know, a couple of billion here, a couple of billion there. Uh, and as I said, it's going to be a long, lumpy road. What we were seeing, however, was some fairly significant dollar strength from the beginning of June. The dollar strengthened fair bit over June. It's weakened a little bit 
last couple of days, but that and our rand has kind of held on during that. So, I mean, we will take it. We will absolutely take it with both hands. I want to touch on Tesla quick. A couple of things around Tesla. Um, their second quarter sales declined. And some people in the world are saying that this is the end of the world. It's not. Uh, here's the point with Tesla. Uh, quite simply, what you had was a, a, a company that back in the day, it, it was Tesla. I mean, there, there was there was the was it the Volt and the Leaf and a few other options out there if you wanted electric vehicles, although they were more hybrid than electric. Tesla owned this market. They don't own it anymore. That's your problem with first mover advantage. So they established the market, and for a while there, it was theirs. But now everyone else, GM, Ford, Chrysler, uh, BYD, everyone else is saying. Oh, look at that. There's money to be made. So, of course, they're losing market share. By reports, I, I was trying to, it, it's difficult to get it, it, complete ascertain the numbers, but it looks like they've still got a sort of low to mid 50% market share. That is absolutely giant, monsterly giant. Um, the, the stock is not cheap. We'll have a look at the price chart in it. So, it's cheap on forward PEs, it's cheap on price to books, but, you know, relative, the forward PE is 59, the 10 year mean is 129. That was massively expensive. There's also the early adopters have adopted, right? They rushed out. Those folks who want to try things new have done it. Uh, folks who live in flats, like me, if I go to Tesla or BYD or the Jaguar I-Pace or whatever, where do I charge it? I, I, I would have to pop across, I think they're charging stations somewhere in Rosebank Mall or Zone. Uh, Standard Bank's got, I think, maybe as well. So those early folks are in. So it now gets tougher. We're also seeing a lot of move to hybrids. Uh, that's partly because of range anxiety. The thing being is that electric vehicles are not going away. I know the petrol heads hate them. Sure, absolutely. But they're not going away. I mean, Tesla's just, as I said, that first mover advantage has come back to hurt them. Uh, here's the one thing I don't like. Look at those shares outstanding. So over the last 10 years, they've gone from uh, what was that? Oh, they're not going to show me. Uh, about 1.8 million to 3.1 million. That is a ton of shares. Going to Elon Musk in part, but just executives. You know, they're not buying back shares. They don't have cash for that. So the shares outstanding are quite terrifying. The analysts' uh, price targets, the average is 231. The current is 186 in price. How does this person who's been at low uh, pretty much forever in a day had a low target of 85 and in January last year almost got it? Sorry, the low, the, the, yeah, the, the target is 85 and the stock got down to 107. But they are quite persistent. We've seen our high range come down. The high is now 310. Interestingly, five sells, four strong sells, 21 holds, 12 buys, and six strong buys. Point being is that Tesla is actually doing kind of okay. Uh, yeah, I want the historical graph. Uh, it, 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 it's had a – look, make no mistake. It's been tough. Let's look at a 10-year chart. And you can see it peaking up there at 414. Uh, remember his take private at 420 nonsense tweet. So 414, and it's now at 231. But if we zoom that chart in, certainly we have got some action coming. We've got a bit of a break here in terms of that line there, although I don't like those sort of uh, trend lines. But what we have got is a bit of a break there. Am I buying Tesla? No, I am not buying Tesla. Bunches of reasons. Um, but certainly the, the story that electric vehicles are over is bogus. The story that Tesla is over is bogus. Tesla does need to bring some cheaper cars. And they were supposed to do it. Musk cancelled it uh, for, and said he's going to do robo-taxis. If you speak with Viv Govender, he will tell you that this is a tech business. But autonomous driving level five, we're not anywhere near that yet. Not anywhere near that yet. Uh, you can do it in, in, in controlled. Uh, Waymo's doing it. Uh, GM Cruise was doing it, but it's pulled out. You, you can do it in very clearly defined places. But the dream of Tesla is that I own a Tesla uh, when I'm not using it, which is most of the time for most people, your car sits idle. It goes and earns you money as a robo-taxi. Or you know, Uber just stocks up with Teslas instead of uh, uh, having independent drivers. That is the, the dream here. 
but I think we are ways away. Key point is, it's not over. This is not the end of the world. It's not Tesla going bankrupt. And in fact, that stock has bounced from a low of below 140, currently 231 on uh, close at Tuesday. So plenty doing quite fine there. No need for stress. Uh, two quick things. SARS has made some changes to the tax-free account. It, in fact, it impacts Nobody. Basically, it's pro rata if you weren't a taxpayer for the full year. A registered taxpayer. The fact that you didn't pay tax might mean you didn't earn a salary. That doesn't impact. But if you want more, I've got it on the website, justonelap.com slash ETFs. And in the same place, you will find uh, the RSA retail bonds. I had said I expected those to come down. Uh, I thought the five-year would come down by half, maybe 75 points. It dropped a full percent from 11.5 to 10 and a half. Uh, if you want to reset, you've got to do it by the 20th. Documents are on the website at uh, the, the, the RSA Retail Bond website. It did come down a chunk. It came down a lot more, as I say, than I had expected. I, I you know, thought it was coming, but I didn't think it was coming to that sort of level. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. Uh, that is the uh, disclaimer, as always. Yes, yes. Um, and we'll leave the show there for today. Uh, my name is Simon. Remember, we've got those events. Come along, particularly the Standard Bank one, man. Come across to Rose Bank in Johannesburg, the Standard Bank building. You can catch a Chow train, depending where you live. That's quite fun. Or maybe that's just the, the train nerd in me. My name is Simon. We'll chat again next week. Until then, look after yourself. If you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers, all. <laughs>